everybody. It's so great to have you here on this morning to see your face. And then, if everybody ever been in a situation where God showed up right on time and that prayer was answered, and you had that answer for that miracle that you needed, that we know that God is always an on-time God. In spite of what you're going through, in spite of how difficult it may be, that God always shows up on time. It may seem late in your eyes, but it's just on time in God's eyes. We are so grateful that you are here joining us on this morning. I want you to turn in the book of Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 to 17. We'll be reading from the New International Version of the Bible, Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 to 17. I'm so glad to see your face in the place on this morning that we're able to gather in the house of God. As we celebrate on this Sunday, highlighting black history, as we say that we are celebrating history all around the world, and we're so grateful that you are here with us on this morning. We're so glad to see people who are joining us back from traveling, uh, that your hearts of those who mourn will be comforted even in this time. We continue to pray for you and continue to look at the people and the men and women up at Her Majesty's prison when you see this. We continue to pray for you in your time of hardship, but God has not left your side. Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 to 17 from the New International Version of the Bible. It says, Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were burying and selling there. He overturned the tables the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house shall be called a house of prayer for you're making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to the, at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things that he did and the children shouting the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant. Do you hear these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children of infants? You, Lord, have called forth your praise. On this morning, we're going to share on the sermonic topic, table turners. Look at your neighbor and say, table turners table turners. Lord, we thank you for what eyes have seen and ears have heard. We pray, Lord, that now, even this moment, that you will hide me behind your old rugged cross. Allow this word to go forward. Allow us to be game changers and trendsetters. But on this morning, definitely table turners. In your name we pray. And all those believe, say amen. You may be seated. Uh, throughout the course of history, there's always been table turners. From Jesus to Christ, to Martin, to Malcolm, to Marcus Garvey, there have been people all over the diaspora that have been table turners. Tables represent those physical and mental and carnal impediments that make it difficult to access things for our healing, well-being, and progression in life. Throughout the course of history and humanity, and even in the recent history of the most accosted tragedies in human Kind was a transatlantic slave trade, which resulted in millions of Africans being spread over the diaspora in the world. And this was mostly cast out that these people were regulated no more than cattle, steel, or produce. Greed was and is always one of the central things at the atrocities of humankind. Major crimes against humanity, no matter what color, race, or creed, can be desired for someone to attain wealth. And when that's coupled with inferiority or feeling that you're better than someone else, that when it couples and forms the most equal crimes committed against humanity. Tables are set up as barricades. Tables either slow down or deter or sometimes block people from being able to access what they deserve. If you look at what a table is, a table is simply defined as something, flat piece of surface that allows people to rest something on. Some tables have one leg, two legs, or three legs, and some tables just sit right on the floor. Tables are usually in that time when Jesus was talking about were made of lumber. 
They were made of wood. And these tables were set up. And now in the middle of this church, in this temple, these tables were set up all in front of the church. And people were selling doves. They were selling all kinds of things and trading in front of church. It got so much that the front of the church became a marketplace. A marketplace for selling and buying that it was so busy in front of the church that it was impossible for people to be able to enter into the church. That when people wanted to go and pray, when people wanted to heal, when people wanted to talk to the chief priests, that they were bombarded with being able to sell doves. Imagine coming into church and before you got into these church doors, you were sold something about something that you didn't even need connected, that they were selling chicken, doves, meat, bread right before service. And became so popular that this became a marketplace outside the temple gates. That now Jesus now and his decision, his decision going to the temple came up at this point in his ministry. That he wanted to get into the church, get into the temple, but it was blocked by people selling doves. Jesus at this time became angered in his spirit and overturned tables. In the context of where we are right now in our life, there are a bunch of things happening in this world that, that we need things and tables to be turned. There's so much complexities of things that are unfolding that we need some table turners to come about in our society. There's some things that we need to be able to be knowledgeable that turning the table means that we're changing the tide and giving access to people who are deserving. That people are not misrepresented or mistreated and don't get access to what they're rightly deserved. A church is supposed to be dedicated and relegated for you to be able to come and be healed, not being sold doves. Uh, right now is where we are, and where we are right now is important. So you're saying, Dr. Mike, how do we need and why is it so important to be table turners? I'm so happy you asked because where are we now? Where are we now? The tables that we find ourselves in in our country is that the United Kingdom is trying to turn the tables to make sure we prevent us from having true autonomy. Uh, we have tables of lacking vision in leadership that is progressing and stopping our progress. Uh, we have tables in the church who is losing their assignments, who are trying to make more of a profit than be prophets. Uh, we have tables of hypocrisy where people are just setting up to be judgmental. We have tables of liars and tables of thieves. We have tables of abuse and tables of mistreatment that people need to be overturned. We have tables set up with abusers and mistreatment that people are being misguided. In our very own country, we are suffering of a table of a lack of vision and leadership. Uh, that we don't know where we're going and we don't know where we are. Uh, we are losing our identity day by day by day it's being ripped about and nobody has the courage to want to flip the table. Uh, we've now allowed ourselves to become relegated to just selling doves uh, in front of what we're supposed to be a great little nation. Uh, this place is not just supposed to be a tourist destination but it's our home. It's supposed to be made so and we could be proud but all we're doing is selling our beaches while our schools while the fabric of our society is being relegated to just a dollar bill on a postcard. We're more concerned about how big festival is going to be rather than how big we celebrate our culture. We're more concerned about building buildings than building social programs. We're more concerned about how good we look on a national stage when people in front of us are hurting and dying and crying at night. We need some table turners. Uh, but also there are tables in our lives. Tables in our lives that we've set up that are stopping us from becoming our true selves. Tables of self-doubt. Tables of unforgiveness. Tables of jealousy and pride. Tables of lack of spiritual maturity. Tables of hate that makes it so impossible for us to love each other. And we're saying, how do we make a difference in our community when we have these tables set up that are blocking us from living out a true calling of our creed? Right now, we live in a community where we have people who are struggling and we're just setting up tables. 
The tables prevent you from being who you truly are. So now we get accustomed in thinking that we need these tables all set up. Have you ever grown up in your house here in the Caribbean of the world and that you've had your mom or your dad or your auntie or your friend uh, that there was this one room in the house that you could not sit at that table? Uh, it was a dining room and they set up all the china and all the plates and all the cups and you were never allowed to eat there? Anybody? Anybody ever had that special room that if you sat there, your mom would be like, you better take that bowl of cereal and go somewhere else. This table is set up for the guests. The guests that never come. I've never seen them eat at this table. And it's just set up. It's so beautiful. And every now and again, depending if it's Christmas, you change it to red and gold. If it's Easter, you change it to all white. And in the summer, we have the summer colors that just look so bright. But you're never allowed to eat at that table. In my house growing up, that table represented an impediment for fun. That table blocked me from having fun because that room was one of the biggest rooms in the house. And I wanted to go down there and run around and have fun. However, because the table was there, my mom never let us play down there because she didn't want us to mess up or break anything. The same table that was never used. Tables are set up and they block you from being able to have access to what you truly need and desire. So where are we now? We have tables again in our community, in our spiritual life that are blocking us from living out the true fabric of who we should become. We need to get tired of having these tables represent in our lives. We need to get the courage to be able, like Jesus, to walk in and know that if you see a table that's blocking you from what you truly desire and the intended purpose is not set up, that we need to overturn it. Tables of political and, and, and family hypocrisy. Tables of, of people being intimidated. Tables that we need overturning. That we grew up in a society that if something was wrong and something was need to be said, that we overturn tables. Tables of a lack of empathy. Tables of be us being complicit to, to people who are doing wrong. I don't know that sometimes we allow our friendships and our relationships to cause us to set up tables of compromise. So because they're our friend, because they're our family, we leave tables of compromise set up, which cause us to not have a community and a life that has true independence and freedom. That's why we're able to be called corrupt, uh, because we're able to see something and we know it's wrong, but because we're afraid of overturning the tables of corruption and compromise, we allow this to exist. And this is why we are here in 2024, 74 years after we've had our own legislature being threatened to be taken over again by United Kingdom, because we allow tables of compromise to erode the fabric of good standing people in our community. This is why we are here. We caused ourselves to be here. But even in our lives, we need to overturn those tables of settling that we've allowed ourselves to just become okay with being okay. Okay with just being sad. Okay with just being anxious. Okay with just being oppressed. We need to overturn these tables. So if you think about these tables that are usually made of wood and they're, they're there and they block you. So now Jesus walking in, he sees these people selling these doves in front of the church and he looks at them and he just overturns these tables. Well, why can't these tables stay there? Because these tables, if they stay there long enough, if tables stay there long enough, they become a fixture. And now people who come after you think that these tables belong. Why can't this table stay there? Because they become a fixture. And generations after will think this is how it's supposed to be. This is why tables can't stay here. This is why they can't stay here. Because we're setting a precedent. 
for what we think should happen. Now, now let's test this. Now let's test this. Now, hey, anybody in here has a dining room in your house? Anybody? You can show your hands. I'm not. It's, uh, it's, it's not a trick question. You got a dining room in your house? Uh, uh, do you have a dining room sometimes that you don't allow your kids to play in? And they can't touch it? Uh, you have a dining room that they can't eat at? Yeah? Uh, why are you doing that? Uh, because your mama did it to you? And her mom before that did it to you? So now you've picked up the habits that were passed down? Uh, that's why the tables can't stay there. Uh, because if we've allowed tables to stay there long enough, we are now allowing these things that just became a tradition to become enrolled in the fabric of who we are. These are why the tables can't stay. Because we're now setting up what meant to be temporary has now become permanent. Anybody still have the Christmas tree up? Don't put up your hand. Anybody still have the Christmas tree up? I see you. Uh, the guilt is all over your face. Amen. Uh, just keep it up. You only have 10 more months. Uh, you only have 10 more months. Just, just keep it there. Uh, it's, it's, just put it in the corner. Uh, why can't they stay there? Because after a while, what bothered you for a moment, what bothered you for a moment now becomes permanent. That's why they can't stay there. Because what bothered you for a moment now becomes permanent. Permanent. See, the tables, when you set up a table selling, the people who were there in front of the church selling in front of the temple, well, after a while, because nobody said anything to them, they just left their tables there. And after a while, what became a Sunday thing now became every day. So now it was just every now and again, but it became such a habit that every time you came to the temple, you had to interact with these people selling stuff. Think about the tables that you have set up in your life. The tables of doubt and tables of anxiety, the tables of depression, the tables of hate, the tables of unforgiveness that you have set up in your life. And you put them there temporarily. But because you found that they found a purpose, you have left them there. But here's the bad thing that happens. Because you've left them there so long, they now become a permanent fixture in your life. And now they're blocking you from being able to get the blessing. And now you don't even know where to put them. Because the rest of your house has been filled up with everything else. So will you say, well, where should I put the table? I'm going to leave it right there. Now, this is what we do. You have so much unforgiveness, so much hurt, so much pain, so much things that you keep them in your heart and you keep them there and you don't know what to do. Jesus says that I need to overturn these tables. You'll be saying, Dr. Mike, why didn't Jesus just ask them? Why didn't he just go and ask them to move the tables? I'm so happy you asked. Um, have you ever gone to someone's house? that wasn't yours and but you have to be there and you go there and see stuff you don't like you can ask them to move something yes it's not your house you could suggest strongly in someone's house that might be your last invite but you can suggest strongly However, Jesus was walking into the house of the Lord. The temple of God is for everybody. So he has as much right to say as if it's his own house. So let me just ask you, if you had your own house, if somebody has their own house or apartment, you have your own place, and somebody now, when you come home from a long day at work, it's a Friday afternoon. You've worked now 45, 50 hours. And you get in there to your house and you want to get on your favorite chair and turn on your favorite TV. And you get there and you walk in. And in the very spot where you were expecting to sit down, there is somebody sitting in your seat. 
Oh, okay, y'all, y'all a little bit too holy. Let, let me bring it, let me bring it. You, that You won't do that. Oh, let's, let's just, I uh, like when there are visitors in church. You're smiling there in the blue, I'll talk to you. Uh, just imagine you come in church, right? And they're here, and you walk into church. None of these people are here, because they didn't do that to you. Uh, but sometimes, in some of the churches around here, sometimes, right, if you're sitting in their seat, in the church, they just walk up to you and just stand next to you and they, then they say good morning. It's because you're sitting in their seat in the church they don't own. They don't even pay tithes and offering. They just come here all the time and just take it up the seat. But they feel that, the, that that's, it's theirs. Imagine if somebody is in your car. Don't get angry. Sitting in your seat. When you walk up to them, especially if you got a nice brand new car, 2023, little night green, don't even just put some tints on it. Had the pastor just pray for it yesterday. Imagine, you didn't even rip the plastic off the seats. There's plastic all up on the dashboard. You didn't even know it could rip off. Imagine that's you. And then you go open your door and somebody's sitting there. You just got your first payment, paid your whole insurance. This person is sitting in your car with some dirty shoes and some dirty pants. I want to paint this picture for you. And you didn't even invite them into your car. Let me ask you a question. Are you going to ask them kindly to move? Are you going to come into them and say, ma'am, sir, I'm sorry. It seems that you apparently mistook my car for yours. I know sometimes this happens all the time. It happened to me last week. You wouldn't believe it. But I just want to kindly ask you, can you please um, remove yourself quickly or expeditiously but nicely out of my vehicle? No. No. I can see your faces right now. You're saying, I wish someone would be sitting in my car that I have to pay Republic Bank for. That you, you know how I fast and prayed for this car? Get yourself out. Get out of my car. That's how Jesus felt when he walked into the temple and saw misplaced things blocking him from where he ought to be. Some of us need to get upset and angry about the tables in our lives, that we've tolerated them so long, but that same passion that we have for material things, we need to have from spiritual things, the things that are blocking you from your blessing, the things that are blocking you from your faith, the things that are blocking you from your obedience, the things that are blocking you from your abundance, that you need to say, I don't care who you are, you are blocking me from what God has called me to do. So you don't ask when you're trying to do something revolutionary. Sometimes you just have to turn the table over. So Jesus was at the point that he says, I can't just ask you. I'm going to just show you. So he says, where, why we can't stay here? Because you're blocking me from where I need to go. Uh, unless I keep you too long. Uh, and then we thought, the last thing I want to share, where do we, where can we go? We know why we're here, but where can we go? Jesus now, in the scripture as it goes on, that after he overturned the tables, it said that people were able to get access to the temple and that people were healed and people were set free. He says, where can we go when we overturn the tables? Though after you overturn the tables, you have access to healing. You have access to forgiveness. You have access to freedom. So you're saying, why can't we stay here? Because staying here is not so good. Where can we go from here? I believe that if enough of us overturn enough tables in this country, that we can be independent, that we can have our own autonomy, that we can run our own economy, that we don't have to be begging and pleading for help every time, that we can fix our schools, fix our prisons, fix our roads. 
Fix our electrical system, fix our flow internet, our CCT and Digicel, that we could not have to pay $500 just to be connected to the entire world. That we don't have to be disadvantaged and taken advantage of, that we can have running water. I'm sorry, I know you're visiting, uh, but these are the problems that we live with every day. That we don't have to worry about having inconsistent water, inconsistent light, people discriminate against us, and people coming in and trying to take our jobs and positions. If we can overturn the tables, we can can make this little country a great little nation once again where our forefathers bled and died and stood up that we can walk around on any international stage and said, I am from the Virgin Islands. We can do that, but we have to be willing to overturn the tables because what's around that table is better than what we're doing right now. Uh, but unless you think I'm going to talk about the country just forever, uh, if a country to change, that people individually need to change. And uh, for a country to be made different, the people that live in the country have to change. So now it's all on all of us individually and collectively to understand that we also need to be table turners, not just on a world stage, not just on a political level, but in our individual lives, that we need to become table turners internally and spiritually, that we need to get in charge and get to a point where we say, God, I am tired of allowing people to block my blessing, block my praise, to block my peace. There's some now that you are allowing people to be an impediment to your freedom, to be an impediment to your peace of mind, and you need to now turn the table because what's waiting on you is your freedom. What's waiting on you is your peace. What's waiting on you is your healing. That's why Jesus said, I'm going to overturn these tables so you can be Heal, so you can be set free, so you can have a second chance of forgiveness, so you can have hope. That's why he wanted to turn the tables to give you access. Uh, but if Jesus went through all this trouble to turn all these tables over in your life and you still don't walk into the temple, you're still not going to get your freedom. So after the tables are turned, you have to do something. Uh, flip the tables so you can be free. Flip the tables so you can keep your peace of mind. So you can have your healing and your deliverance and your blessing and your victory. I want to just be able to close and tell you something. I realize in reading this text that Jesus was a table flipper from a long time. Uh, that Jesus was now understanding that Jesus was in before he started his ministry. Uh, Jesus, as you know, was a carpenter. I uh, don't know much about carpentry. Don't ask me to ever build you anything. Uh, it's going to be a little crooked, but I'm going to overcharge you. Uh, it's going to be crooked, but I'm going to charge you the highest price. Uh, uh, but Jesus was a carpenter. Uh, he grew up in humble beginnings. So Jesus was accustomed to hand lumber and wood. Uh, he was accustomed to knowing how to build them and shape them. He was a carpenter. He was a custom of wood. And I realized that if you're building a table, at some point in time, to get it secure, you have to flip the table over to get access to the next side. Jesus was accustomed of flipping tables. As he grew up now, when he saw this temple, and he changed his, now, his ministry to now helping and being the Messiah here on earth, he says, if if I'm here, I'm going to make sure that these temples that should be called a house of prayer, as declared in Isaiah, that needs to be nothing else. There are no doves, there are no selling, there are no stealing, there are no argument, that this place should be called a house of prayer, should be called a house of healing, and a house of deliverance. So Jesus now flipped that table. Uh, but here's the thing that Jesus was now setting up, that he was a table flipper, uh, that he was accustomed of being able to overturn things and change what they were intended purpose so people could have access. Uh, uh, if you were a Bible scholar, uh, you might be, this going to hit you uh, uh, because it hit me. Uh, and when it hits you, I hope you get it. Uh, Jesus was always now a carpenter. He had to flip tables over. He was now coming to the temple. He had to flip tables over. How uh, do you remember now uh, that Jesus was now living in a life where he now was crucified? He was always still a table flipper. I remember now a table is something a piece of wood that's laid down on the ground. 
that doesn't now necessarily need legs, that it could just lay flat and you can sit on the floor. Uh, my Bible school teacher is here with me and she will recount when you told me that they laid Jesus out on the cross. You see, the thing is, if, if you, when you laid on the cross, you're laid down flat. So they put Jesus on a proverbial table. Uh, this table was made of wood and Jesus was now laid down flat on this table and his hands were pierced and his foot was nailed to that cross. He was laid out on a table. Uh, but what they forgot, uh, that Jesus was always in the table flipping business. Uh, so what they did, uh, they made a mistake. Uh, what they did is that they took that table and flipped it up. Uh, and Jesus says, uh, now that you've hung me up, uh, now that I'm elevated, uh, I'm a table flipper. So now he took uh, what was intended to hurt him, what was intended to kill him, what was intended to cause him disgrace. That now symbol of crucifixion became a table and a flipping of hope, a table of peace, a table of deliverance. I want to be able to stop by and tell somebody that Jesus is in the table flipping business, that no matter what you're going through, give your table to God and allow him to change your situation. You're worried about your marriage, give it to God. You're worried about your life, give it to God. You're worried about your children, give it to God. You're worried about your marriage, and your miracles and your misery give it to God you're worried about what's going to happen tomorrow give it to God you're worried about your finances give it to God uh, because here's the thing uh, if it's bad right now uh, if I give it to Jesus he's going to flip it over so I need somebody who's been going through enough stuff in your life to say God I've been struggling with this table right now uh, I need you to flip this table over. I don't feel like preaching to myself. If I just have one or two people who don't afraid to say, if you say that God, right now in my life, I need you to flip some stuff in my life. I've been struggling long enough, but now it's time to start flipping some tables. But here's what happens. When he starts flipping the tables and he was able to get into a temple courts, here's what happened when the tables were flipped over. Here's what happens when the children got set free. Here's what happens when people were able to get delivered. God said, I'm not going to preach for a little while. I've been preaching for the last seven Sundays. Uh, but if it's the last Sunday and it's since the time of completion, I want to be able to tell you this. When they got into the temple and they got their healing, the children weren't allowed in the temple. They weren't able to get in the temple. But the children saw other people people getting healed. What did the children do? The children started praising for what they saw happen. Now for your life, sometimes it may seem crazy for you to start praising God when you see other people getting blessed, when you see other people getting delivered, when you see other people's tables getting flipped. But if you say, God, if you can flip their table, I believe you can do it for me. Some of us need to get happy when other people are getting blessed, when other people are getting delivered. Uh, because here's what I know, uh, that my table, uh, my turn uh, is about to come. And the same God uh, that did it for you uh, is the same God that can do it for me. I know you're trying to figure out uh, where your table is going to land. I know you're trying to figure out how it's going to work out. Uh, but here's what God says. Uh, all things work together for good for them that love God and are called according to his purpose so one you have to say God I give my heart to you I give my life to you I give my soul to you and right now if you need to turn a table over in my life right now you need to change something in my psyche God flip the table and I praise you in advance some of us need to let go and let God be a table flipper. I know it might be a mess, but God is able to turn your mess into a miracle. Give your
your life to God. Give your heart to God. Surrender right now as he surrendered on the cross because what looks like defeat is just a setup for you to be able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all God will ever ask, hope, or think. I'm going to leave you right now. But when you get tired, when you get lowly, when you feel like giving up, I just want you to remember my favorite scripture. My favorite scripture is when you feel like you're low and God can't help you. My brothers and my sisters, life is hard. Life is difficult. Life is trying. And you are always going to find yourself. Jesus is sometimes going to break you down so he can build you up. But the good thing about being down, the scripture says he will never leave you nor forsake you. That his grace goes down low and reaches up high. But sometimes why I like being low? Because it gives me a good perspective of the grace of God in my life. And one of my favorite scriptures is that I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help knowing that my help coming from the Lord which made heaven and earth that he will not suffer thy foot to be moved he that keepeth thee will neither slumber nor sleep the Lord is thy keeper the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand the sun will not smite you by day nor the moon by night the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil he shall preserve thy soul the Lord will preserve thy going out and thy coming in thy going out and thy coming in that means when God flips the table in your life don't worry about what else comes your way God is saying I'm gonna surrender it all God flip the tables that I need the tables of doubt the table of anxiety the table of depression I give it all to you God is in a table flipping business I literally wasn't going to shout today. But when you've been through enough and you are able to rely on the goodness of God and what you thought was a mess, what you thought was God giving up on you, when you saw things being flipped up in your life, you said, God, why is this mess happening? It's because even though you didn't recognize that table as impediment, you, even though you didn't realize that person was blocking your blessing, God says, I'm gonna flip that table over so you could get free. So if you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge God, when tables start to flip up in your life, you're going to say, God, I don't know what you're up to, but I'm going to keep trusting you. I'm going to keep believing in you. When tables turn, believe God is in the table turning business. Stop trying to figure out why some tables are turned in your life. It's because God is making way for you to get to what you desire. God is making way for some things that were blocking you. And sometimes if we say we're trusting God, we have to trust him, meaning that he's not always going to include us in his divine plan. It's easy if God says, you know what? I'm going to break up this. I'm going to move this. You're going to lose this job. This friend is going to stop talking to you. This is going to happen Monday. This is going to happen Tuesday. But why do we need God if we know everything? Here's my last word, and I'm not going to be petty. I want to say, prophesy to some of you here. There have been one or two tables flipped up in your life already. And God is trying to get your attention.
Don't wait for God to have to upturn your whole entire house in your life to get your attention. Right now, God, you turn these tables, do your thing. Because that means at the other end of this is my healing and my deliverance. Let's all stand. you to grab the hand of somebody next to you even if you have to go down a little bit just touch somebody's hand that's good touch somebody's hand now we're about to pray yeah it's all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed If you're squeezing someone's hand and you're saying, I need prayer. God has been flipping some stuff in my life, but now I realize it's so, so I can get access to my blessing and my healing. If you're one of those persons, just ever so slightly squeeze the neighbor's hand. You don't have to show nobody, just squeeze your neighbor's hand and say, I need prayer, I need, I need direction, I need wisdom. Yeah? All right. And now, for if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to make that decision on today, I want you to squeeze the hand of the person next to you. Whether you're on your right or your left, squeeze that hand ever so slightly. If you have removed yourself from the fellowship of Jesus Christ, but now you realize that this table is being turned so I can get the proper access back to Christ, and you say, God, I want to reconnect with you, if you're that person, Squeeze your neighbor's hand. Now, 
It's not a trick. I'm going to be obedient in this moment. If somebody on your left and your right squeezed your hand for whatever reason, we're in this together. And I don't want people in anybody's business. You and that person want you to meet me at the altar as we pray together. You may be coming because you need prayer. You may be coming because you want to give your life to Christ for the first time. You may be coming because you want to reconnect. Or you may be coming and saying, God, I need you in this moment. If you had somebody on your right and your left who squeezed your hand, if you're that person, you felt that tug, come forward with that person. Come, if it's all of you in the row, just come. Make a way. Move forward. I beg to not believe that nobody That's exactly how it's going to look. You don't need to know if it's this person, that person, or that person. Again, if somebody squeezed your hand, walk up with them. If it was a group of you, come together. If you want or say, God, I just need your grace, your strength, and your mercy, we're going to walk together. walk up holding hands because we don't want to know God knows who it is if somebody on your right and your left is the last time. That you want to give your life to Christ, squeeze that person's hand. If you want to get reconnected with God, squeeze that person's hand. Or you're just having a hard time in life, squeeze that person's hand. Come together. Come together. Let, let go and come together. nobody knows your business you don't have to be worried about who's watching you only the person on your left and the right knew that you put out your hand but here's the thing Because there have been some moments when God was flipping some tables in my life. And I thought my life was being ruined. But all it was, was God was making room for me to have access. So whatever that access is that you are here before this altar for, whether to give your life to Christ, whether to reconnect, whether to ask God for wisdom and direction and support. It's not my faith, but the faith that we place in Jesus the Christ. 
So I want you to put what you are up here for on the forefront of your mind. And we believe in God to work it out. If you are giving your life to Christ, don't worry about tomorrow. God is going to work it out. If you're coming back into the body of Christ, don't worry about it. God is going to work it out. You worry about this relationship, this job, this family member, whatever is on your mind, God is going to work it out. It may not be when you want to, but God has given us a promise. It's going to be right on time. So Lord, we pray collectively that all those who are gathered as we hold the hands of the person to our left and our right, we don't know why they are here, but we know that we serve a God who's able to do exceedingly above all we could ever ask or think. So God first, for the people that have come to give their life to Christ, repeat after me, Lord, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose from the dead for me. And I now make a decision to make you the head of my life. All things are passed away and all things become new. I am now in your hands. For those who have come to reconnect, I've never left. I've always been there by your side. So God, welcome back into my heart. Take full control. In Jesus' name. And for all of those around the sanctuary watching online and here, Whatever trouble that beseech you and get you, whatever harm or the lack of peace that you're facing, whatever unforgiveness that you're holding in your heart, God, we ask you to remove it. There's some of us who are in need of healing. Heal right now. Whatever table is blocking us from what needs that we desire, flip them right now and give us access. We believe it now. So anoint these sons and daughters from the crown of your head to the sole of their feet. We believe this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all those that believe say amen. amen. Now, I'm not, we're gonna just pray right here. Ministers, can you come step forward? The ministers of the church, step forward. Step up on them, yes, yeah, step up. Turn, turn, face them. If you gave your life to Christ, if you made a commitment to Christ, make the last step and let someone know. We're just going to take your information. You already prayed the prayer. It's already done. We just want to connect with you. We pray with you and guide you and support you in your next steps so you don't have to do it alone. Amen? And if you want to join this church, this is not my church. It doesn't belong to me. Don't let any table stop you from getting into a good circle of believers. Amen? So as we leave this place, but never your presence. May you watch over us. Guide us and protect us. For the first in a long time, God, give us rest. 
Give us a peace of mind. Give us a joy that we lost. Today I have access. Says we leave this place but never your presence. Watch over us. Guide us and protect us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all those that believe, say amen. amen. All those that believe, say amen. amen. God bless you. And have an amazing day.